when our children don't do what we want them to do, and we don't know how to spur them into the action that we want them to take, we lean on control to get them to do the action because we want it to be a certain way as parents. And by control, I mean we spank, we raise our voice, we get angry, we yell, we resort to punitive measures, we discipline, we punish, we take away, we ground, we do whatever we possibly can with the tools that we got that we know how to use from our childhood in order to get them to take that action that we want them to take. And in this video, we're talking and reviewing chapter two of Out of Control by Dr. Shafali Tisperi. And in chapter two, it's titled, A World That Majors in Control. So stay tuned. You're going to want to hear this message because it changed the way that I looked at parenting and kind of opened my mind and blew my mind a little bit. And it's going to blow your mind as well. So let's get to it. What's up? And welcome back to the channel. My name is Ethan. I'm a single dad to Lincoln Love. And to be honest, I have made this video probably 16 times. I made it earlier today and it ended up working. Then I tried to upload to the computer and then it didn't upload. And then I deleted the videos and then I couldn't upload it again. So now I'm sitting here at pretty much 10 o'clock shooting this video because it's got to be published tomorrow. And I want to go to bed and I want to do my nightly routine. So we're going to right into it because chapter two, a world that majors in control of the book out of control was so good. It was just really good and there was a couple parts in which I want to share with you guys that really landed for me and really opened my eyes to, hey, okay, this is what's happening, this is what's going on. So if you haven't checked out the review of the first chapter and going through the first chapter, which is why discipline doesn't work, you should probably go check that out right now uh, because that was a great chapter as well and this kind of builds on it and builds how we use control. And so I wanted to share that this little part from the book actually is chapter two. Let's see, let's see what we got here. Boom. I'll read this a little bit later as well in a different part. But did you ever think that much of what we call discipline as nothing more than an adult child pitching a fit? Whew. Then an adult child pitching a fit. Because when I look back to the times that I disciplined, that I hit, um, I wouldn't really ever hit, but I'd kind of like do a light spank or just grab really quickly or do whatever those cases were, or raise my voice. Whenever I'm in that state, usually it's because I don't know what to do. Like I have no idea what to do to get and control him, to get him to do what I want him to do. And so I'm just left with like whatever tools and whatever things that have been imprinted on me by my childhood, that's what I'm left doing raising my voice, getting angry, um, grabbing really quickly. Those are all things that, especially the raising the voice that my dad and mom used to do with me. And in this chapter, she goes on to speak about how we learn how to parent from our how our parents parented us. And we carry all of those unresolved emotions and traumas and pains and hurts and emotions and feelings with us. And when our kid isn't acting or a child isn't acting the way that we want them to, that gets triggered in us. We go back to that being that four years old, that, that person that just want to do this, but their mom or dad is screaming or yelling at them or they have anxiety or whatever the case might be. That's there. That happens. Because think about it. Like, where did you learn how to parent? You didn't go to school for it. I didn't go for school to it. I, didn't, I don't know. I have no idea, right? That's why I'm trying to learn. That's why I'm trying to grow. That's why I'm trying to expose myself to as many things and as many people as possible that are parenting. Because my parents parented me in such a way that I love them. I appreciate them. It's all there. Wicked. They did a wicked job. I'm a beautiful human being. And there's some things that I didn't like. I didn't like getting spanked. I didn't like getting punished. I didn't like getting grounded. I didn't like all of these things or timeouts. I didn't like them. They never felt good. They didn't feel good at all. They didn't correct my behavior. And so those are things that I look at that I'm like, okay, I want to change, but how do I change those? And so that's kind of where she begins to come in with all of these different ideas and, and, and destroying the beliefs around control and, and really showing me that, hey, when I am trying to discipline, usually it's because I'm angry. Usually it's because I'm upset. And when I go to those measures, I'm just being a big kid trying to control another child. I'm just a child trying to control a child. That's all that it is. And so if I can let go of the control, if I can let go of those emotions and feel that pain from my childhood or wherever that's from, then I'm more likely to be a clear vessel for my son to just, when he does that, I don't react. Because, hey, 
Like, why would I react in the first place? So it's funny because when I shot this video the first time, it literally was like, you know, within a 30 minute period, Lincoln had about four temper tantrums where I also reacted to those. So it's like everything I just read, I did not do. I did the opposite. And I really saw myself and how I was reacting. It's just like I was trying to control Lincoln and to get him because he was interrupting me when I was shooting videos. Like this video was interrupting me. He's like saying, chopping, like, blah, 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 blah. And like I got so distracted. And there was this idea that I had in my head that I wanted to look perfect while shooting this video. I'm sharing this with you this now because it's still vulnerable. It's still the truth about my experience. And I wanted to look perfect. I want to look perfect saying and spitting all this information. It just makes so much sense and for you and help you so much and I kept on getting interrupted so I kept on getting frustrated like okay I'm not coming across as perfect anymore I'm looking stupid I don't know what I'm saying I don't know all this stuff so I'm judging myself and getting irritated and then I went on to blame him for my irritation because he's the one who's doing this instead of just being like yo what the hell take a step back dude your feelings are your feelings he's just being him like that's the thing is that kids are just being kids it's us that that make it mean something about ourselves. Like how often do, I do this all the time. Like when I go in a certain places or if Lincoln's throwing a temper tantrum, I begin to like in a public place. Like there's thoughts that run through my head. Like I'm a bad parent. Oh my God, people are judging me. Oh my God, people are looking at me. Oh my God, people are gonna think I'm the worst. People, oh my God, like how am I gonna react to this? I don't know, should I do this? Should I do this? I gotta look like a good parent. It's just like, what the fuck? Like it's not about me. It's not about me at all. It's about my son who's breaking down in the middle of the mall and I gotta help this dude get control of his emotions and feel his stuff and whatever's going on and just help that and be there for him. But so often we make it mean something about ourselves but that's just because of our unresolved past, of our unresolved traumas, of all that stuff that's back there. And, and really when we begin to understand like, okay, hey, this has nothing to do with us and that we can't blame our children for our feelings. We have to take responsibility of those our own. Then it's like, okay, we can take a step. We can take a step in the right direction that, that I need to let go of control because it's really just a false sense of like, I need to control you so that you act the way that I want you to act instead of just accepting that, that they are who they are. And they're going to be different than you. And so it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful chapter. And I want to read just this little part from the book, actually, because I think it's super, super important. It goes to show of like how much of our childhood is also imprinted on us as parents. This comes from page number 11, a world that majors in control. Every conflict in our present lives, whether with our children or spouse or other adults, is in some way a recreation of our childhood. Every relationship, every interaction is based on a blueprint from our own upbringing. In one sense, then, there are no adults in the room. We're all just children acting out. When it comes to parenting, we are in many ways children raising children. Janet is an example of what I'm describing. Things became so bad between her and her 10-year-old son that every time he entered the room, she found herself tensing up, dreading the conflict she knew was almost certain to follow. Tracing this feeling back in therapy, she realized that she was experiencing the same helplessness she used to feel around her father, who regularly beat her. All these years later, her son, all boy, boisterous energy, which was sometimes quite aggressive, was triggering her unresolved past. Without realizing it, Janet was reacting to her son as if he were her father, which is why she immediately on the, was on the defensive around him. Their almost daily fights only served to cement her belief that her son was a tyrant, an image of males that had more to do with her father than with her son. In other words, a pattern of behavior established decades ago with her own parents was now in the driver's seat when it came to how she parented. Children who are dominated grow up either to dominate or be dominated. This is why for generations, a belief in a parent's right to dominate and control have prevailed, especially a father's right to decide for the family, a phenomenon often referred to as patriarchy. This is huge. As one client in her 40s related, when I was young, a young girl, my mother would sometimes say, your father is Lord and master of the house. My brother and I believed her. My father's angry look ensured compliance with the way he said things should be. A child's smooth cheek needn't, needn't be struck many times for the message to get through. Even my father's clenched jaw became enough to bring me into line. Another favorite maxim in her home was the familiar children should, shouldn't, should be seen but not heard. For me, that was the parent-child relationship was clear. Obey or else. My preference in any situation wasn't on anyone's radar screen, including my own. In retrospect, I can see I've lived most of my life unaware I had a choice in anything. Blaming someone or something out there became as reflexive as breathing. Generations the world over have subscribed to an approach to parenting, which states that, by reason of age and experience, the parent is at the top of the pyramid and the child, by default, is at the bottom. 
The idea is that children should fit into the parents' world, not the other way around. I often hear people say, they are my children and I'll decide what's good for them. Many believe that because we brought our children into the world. We own them. It's as if they were one of our possessions. This mistaken notion feeds our belief that we have a right to dictate them. Based on this flawed idea, we justify coercion, manipulation, and even physical punishment. Of course, we coach it as teaching and create a philosophy called punitive discipline. Coming up with fancy strategies, techniques, and gimmicks, volumes are written on the subject, yet if we're courageous enough to admit it, all forms of diff diff discipline are just temper tantrums in disguise. Did you ever think of much of what we call discipline as nothing more than a child adult pitching a fit? Unless we realize the entire premise of the heavy-handed punitive discipline is based on our delusion of superiority over our children. The daily struggles with behavior that play out in our homes, in the classroom, on the playground, and the conflicts of the wider world will continue unbated. Indeed, this authoritarian approach to parenting is largely responsible for the world as we know it. Whether we are talking about a woman in midlife who has never followed her own voice because her father insisted he was in charge, dictatorships that tyrannize their subjects, or nations that see to subjugate other nations in international conflict. The root of the dysfunction we experience as individual nations in the world lies in the belief that people need to be controlled. A belief that no matter which culture or part of the world which we come from pervades our parenting. The need to dominate is what discipline is all about. And this domination is responsible for most of the most, mo for much of the emotional distress that has characterized our species for eons. If you look at most of the supposedly great men of the past, they were in many cases tyrants who sought to con conquer. Their greatness was achieved through control at the expense of those they subjugated. Whether we're talking about in individuals such as Alexander the Great or Napoleon or Empire, such as Rome or the British Empire, they were driven by a need to dominate and control. Just as most of the world evaluates greatness in terms of how much control a leader achieves, so two good citizens, like good children, are those who comply. You gotta be a good boy, comply with the rules. And that's not in the book. This is Ethan's comment. Citizens like good, and who are the, who are the most compliant of all citizens? Aren't they the military, which functions entirely on orders, prizes, discipline above all else? Uniform behavior is a gold standard in a world that majors in discipline. In contrast, once in a while, a leader arises on the world scene who dramatically improves the well-being of other humans. Though such leaders have been few and far between during the course of her history, who of us wouldn't want our child to grow up to be a truly good leader? maybe even a great leader who fosters peace, prosperity, and well-being. Who of us doesn't want our child to grow up to be a free thinker, a trailblazer, original and innovative? Who of us doesn't want our child to be true to who they really are instead of docile, easily manipulated, and controlled by others? We say we want these things for our children, yet our addiction to discipline sabotages, sabotages the very goals we set for them. A diet of control, compliance, and conformity guarantees either mediocrity and an acceptance of the mundane or dictatorship or, and tyranny. Some parts of the world have in many ways moved beyond the dark ages through the Renaissance and move more into an enlightened era. We don't put people in the stocks anymore. We don't burn them at stake because they have different religious beliefs from us. And for the most part, people don't believe that sickness is a punishment from God. Ours is far less hierarchical, a more democratic era that has existed on the planet until now. Though there is an increasing awareness of the importance of valuing human beings and treating them fairly, together with a growing consciousness of the importance of caring for the planet when it comes to raising our children, most of us are sadly still stuck in the dark ages. Through being disciplined, children the world over are daily discriminated against, often horrifically and with tragic results. It's therefore time to change the entire paradigm of parenting at the core of which the flawed idea of authoritarian discipline that is lording it over. Our children heavy handedly insisted of working with them in a constructive manner that encouraged them to in, encourages them to become self disciplined. Whew. Now, after reading that, um, I just found it incredibly profound. The first part was pretty cool because it really went to show, like, I thought how much of our past and the way that we were grown up and raised influences how we parent and those emotions that are unresolved back then. Because I remember look, look, looking back at my, my past and seeing, like, like, they did a lovely job. They did a wonderful job, and I love them for it. Um, and at the same time, like... I wish there was more love. I wish there was different things. I wish I didn't get yelled at. I wish I didn't get spanked. I wish I didn't get grounded. I wish I didn't get punished. I wish I didn't get all these things and put down and belittled. Like I really wish that didn't exist because those hurt. And I think that maybe you guys can feel the same of like that didn't feel so good at all. And so it was cool to see how those emotions can actually still be here 
and be triggering me to be that way with Lincoln. Like when Lincoln does that, it's like, I, I just lose control. I don't know what to do. And so I revert to what my dad did to me because that's all that I know. And so that was super cool. And then I also loved how, how that line, did you ever think of what, of much of what we call discipline is nothing more than an adult child pitching a fit because I think that is just absolutely beautiful. And and the last part too, I really had this idea of like, um, like how wrong I believe it is to hit a child. Um, because like we don't like, we think fighting, like with MMA, people love MMA. It's 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 interesting in that own. It's an, a different conversation. But like we don't walk around hitting each other when someone does something wrong. Like imagine doing something wrong being hit. Like that, how would that feel? That'd feel gnarly being an adult. So it's like, well, how does that make it okay for a kid? Like why does that? And then, and then there's two, there's a lot of people that say, well, my parents did it to me. Well, how did you feel when your parents did it to you? Probably you felt scared. You probably felt hurt. You probably felt sad cool so why would you want to pass that on to a child another child your child it's just like that's generational trauma that's really what it's happening is there so i'm going to end this this there i thought it was just a really good conversation um around control and a world that majors in control and how how whenever there is a tantrum whenever there's something going on it's really just us trying to get control over the situation and 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 control our kids to be and act a certain way that we want them to be instead of just accepting that this is how they're showing up and this might be who they are and that is okay too uh very clear distinction so there's going to be a little bit more that comes in the next couple chapters on this as well um that i'm excited to share and i could also dive a little bit deeper into maybe some other videos in the future on control because i believe that it is a huge aspect even in our own lives as adults so um, I'd love to know what you thought of the video, so drop that down in the comments down below. Also remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Um, yeah, super late, love you guys, and hopefully you all are well, and I just really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and be here with me and, and 11 o'clock at night, in the middle of the night, so let's get this rolling, let's get it rolling, y'all, peace.